This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. We're ready to talk tech and geeky things with you for this week, episode 405 of the awesome cast. And uh, with us we have in studio, Katie Dudas, at Katie Dudas on, tw- on the Twitters. Hi. She's the director of sales and marketing. Yes, yes. That's all in the yes. right order. Yay! Yay! Best day ever. <laughs> Shut down the show. There you go with a scare house over there doing a lot of fun stuff and playing with Instagram questions. Yes. <laughs> also with us on the uh, on the line from Studio C in the Big D of Dormont, PA, is John hey, hey. Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. Gadget. How's it going today? He's the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. It's wonderful to be here, and and the sun's not blaring too bad we're, we're hitting that time i'm hiding in the where... corner because yeah, there it is there's the sun there's the sun that's how far that's how close i am to it and it throws my exposure off uh <laughs> but anyways this is the awesome cast and uh we're gonna have fun here uh this week before we take a little bit of a week off for good reason i'll talk about a little bit later in the show but again check out everything at awesomecast.com or dot net because brian crawford over the river's edge labels the dot net um you can uh, hit us up on twitter at awesomecast facebook awesomecast and the awesomecast facebook group where we have a lot of discussion about the stories through the week and also thank you to our live partners um, the Rivers Edge PGH.com that's carrying us Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and our West Coast partners at the 405 Media.com that carry us at every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time, so you can catch up on the latest episode that goes up. And of course, uh, we visit them once a month for River Talk, and, and I bring them the awesome thing of the month. And we have a lot of fun with that. And you can join us here, except for next week, uh, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on our Facebook page, which you can get the shortcut to that video page over at live.awesomecast.net. If you uh, want to be a part of our studio audience, hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. We had some people hanging out on Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, in the audience last week. It's really cool to get that vibe and people watching us um, and creeping out our guests sometimes. And, of course, if you want to advertise and talk to the people that uh, we get to speak to, a lot of people uh, from the neighborhood and uh, definitely in the tech sector out there in the Pittsburgh area. I know who you are. Um, <laughs> that say hi to me at the coffees and such. Uh, they're out there. You can hit up awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com today. Uh, for uh, more on that or you can support the show on patreon.com slash awesomecast our friends at the coffee club five dollar level matt weller and john diggy de gore and uh of course michael fedor uh at the fan of the show of the dollar level you can uh, support us keep the lights on for us at patreon.com slash awesomecast so let's get into our awesome things of the week and um I just found mine. You just found yours? I was just wondering. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I have to I have to call out Chilla. I picked up the bag. Oh, you picked up the bag. I, so I have a question for you. You I, picked up the the Sassoon bag. The Sassoon bag. Yeah, so it's over there by my desk. I, this is so not my awesome thing, but I just have to update because I know Brian Crawford is going to be happy to hear it too. So I have a question for you. If you, so I swear I ordered the exact. I ordered the bag off the the link that was in the. Same here. Show notes, Same I here. Think. Well, so I'm gonna laugh if we got different bags. His, well, my bag is different than his. Oh yeah. So hold on, let me grab it because mine's about forty pounds. Oh jeez. Um, and you got the red so, one. So I, yeah, I got the red one, and maybe that's why. Maybe it's a color thing. Mm-hmm. But so on your, on your um, shoulder straps. Yeah. You have the USB power. I have thing, a USB right? power thing there. Yeah. Do, do you have the headphone jack? The headphone jack. I don't his think I a, do. I, I swear his has a headphone jack. I don't think I do. Maybe I don't have it either. Huh. I, I'm calling shenanigans. I think he gave us a fake link so he can <laughs> pull her back. 
Uh, hold on, Missy's. Thank you, the producer Missy is bringing it over. No, I don't. I don't have. It was on the other side. Brian Crawford. Yeah, yeah you got to set us straight. What's going on? Do you have a headphone jack on there? On yours? I think he has a headphone jack. This is this is mine. Dun, dun. It was good. So then I got the gathering. Plus I got the um I got the uh, uh podcast moving the next week. So I thought I stuck my monopod. I stuck all my GoPro stuff on there because I need to find somebody that's going to wear it into the mosh pit. Um, I, I, you know I might make. You know what I should do? I should put, wear wear the uh, the GoPro headgear during ICP. <laughs> that's what should happen. Yes. I'm actually putting the. So they have like a tactical strap. Mm-hmm. It's like a cross the cross your chest and around like almost like you would have a gun holster, but instead on the shoulder over here it yeah. has a go GoPro mount. Um, you don't necessarily need the tactical vest if you have a different vest to attach the mount to. Um, and Christopher at the beach will have a life jacket on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I plan on on vacation throwing the gopro on him for an afternoon that is an idea mm-hmm. that, like, and doing like a fun him running around probably uh, um uh time lapse these are so uh, many good ideas happening yeah. right before the <laughs> yeah. gathering and there's so many opportunities i also want to strap it to the ferris wheel i don't know if i want to ride the ferris wheel too i'm like hey can i just strap this to the ferris wheel for ferris wheel for a go around <laughs> it i don't trust it otherwise but anyways that's that's enough I, I, i'll be i'm sure have a lot to talk about when i get back from my trip here about how all this stuff goes and everything but anyways chilla what is your awesome thing of the week <laughs> give me one second while i update the beta so i can continue to live in the future okay um, all so right my yep. my thing rub it my, in in mine because uh keeping with the i'm going on vacation um we were just talking about bags you want to have everything with you Mm -hmm. um i needed an additional cable organizer i think i've reviewed the uh cocoon grits on the on the show um i'm a little short on space for cabling Mm -hmm. and i wanted to kind of have a Something that I could quickly pull out and have exactly the cables that just I myself need. I need this for work too. Um, and what I found was, in the, in the links in there, there's a cable organizer that actually kind of rolls up with a little cinch string. Mm. Um, so here it is. It's still in the bag. It just came today. Um, but this this allows me to put a bunch of cables in here, and then the whole thing rolls up. Um, so I'm super excited about this because I, I actually already have it planned out with like an HDMI cable, two um, USB-Cs, three lightning cables. And I'm thinking, because it, it kind of grows in size towards the ends, um, I should be able to get two power bricks. And I use the anchor power bricks um, that have the the two and four USB ports on them that do fast charge. Um, so when you're at, when you're in your hotel room or whatever, right, you never have enough plugs to begin with. Never, um, never do. I have, I have those um, that allow me to plug in multiple USB devices. Then, um, and I didn't put this in the show notes. I should have. I also highly recommend um, Anchor uh, makes a ten foot US or ten foot lightning cable. They make other cables for for USB C and whatnot too, but. And again, I just got these today, but this is actually a replacement because my last one uh, frayed apart because my kid doesn't know how to take care of them. But you have ten feet of cord. You're wow. this. This will this will go from the wall across the bed, um, whatever. So when I'm reading at night, I can easily just just from reach everywhere, that and then you tangle yourself <laughs> in the cord when you fall asleep reading on your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. and, Chilla, yeah. does it go from the windows to the wall? I didn't hear what she said. Does it go from the windows to the wall? To the wall. It does go from the windows to the wall. Good. <laughs> of course. But I run the air conditioning, so it's not as sweaty. Okay, good. Oh, oh thank goodness. <laughs> you know, that reminds me. I never talked to you guys about when I was at the uh, Portland, Oregon uh, Hyatt Hi- place. It had like a full like panel of every connection you would ever want for your television. Looking right straight into the TV. Um, plugs everywhere. And you actually controlled the TV with an app you downloaded on your phone. Where is this place? Which what it was place a was Hyatt place um, at the near the Portland, Oregon airport. Wow. Yeah, I've seen. I've I I'm, I think there's. I was in a Marriott once. They they still didn't have enough wall outlets. 
Um, but I they did have kind of the breakout box. Yeah, yeah. The only and, other place was um, uh, when we were in Thailand at the, like the resort. Like they had they had one of those breakouts. I think just at the one the one place um, had it. The other one had some kind of a power thing, but I kept blowing the breakers on it. <laughs> so uh, poor waking getting bringing the people up at like three in the morning. Uh, but anyways, so. I, I really like those the breakout piece because as long as they have an HDMI jack, I mm-hmm. mean I have. Miracast stick, Chromecast, Apple TV. He's got a bandolier of devices with him just in case. You never know. You never know how you're going to need to wirelessly present. So that's, I, that's I right. carry that's all three right. technologies with me usually at all times. Exactly. Because they're so thin and light. Um, that Yeah, I, to me, that, that comes in perfect. Related, if anybody knows where I can grab like an older Apple TV to throw into the t- in, in the office here just so I can uh, airplay. Because sometimes it just I just want to airplay mm-hmm. things from my phone that aren't chromecastable but you know that that's that's one thing like um, one of these what hey there you go <laughs> uh, i'll bring it i'll bring it next time i'm in <laughs> of studio of course he has extra i think it's 720 though it's a 720 that is fine that's that why i don't have fine by in. me we i don't have the standards you do in the future chilla <laughs> oh i'm a, i'm still at 1080 p lowly 1080p Krause is the only person that i had know that has like a super high end 4k Jeez. tv at their house Man. And, and one of the things I'm interested in, I'm hoping that one day you can't, you can't airplay 4k. So even if I got the, if I Yet. got a 4k TV with a 4k Apple TV and I airplay from my laptop, it airplays at 1080p. So I'm like, me, I don't know. I don't watch, I don't watch that many movies to need to be in 4k. No, no, not really. I barely know, notice it in the theaters. Dutters, what is your awesome thing of the week? Fighting robot. Fighting robot. Yes. So there was this was back in how long ago was this? They were talking about this. It's the Pilot Labs Zeus Battle Robot. It was they it first showed it back at CES in January. So now you can finally buy it. It's on Amazon. It's legit on Amazon. I'm looking oh, at it right now. It is sixteen hundred dollars, not assembled. Uh, apparently, there's an additional hundred you can spend to have it assembled, but I don't see that option on Amazon right now. But uh, DIY mechanical building block. Yeah, supposedly it'll kick anybody's butt because it's a little fighting robot. It's about 14 inches tall, weighs under five pounds, and has 22 motors. When you absolutely must fight off small dogs. Yes. It is a STEM educational robot. So if you wanted to buy this for your kid, you know, you'd be like, look, I can, my kid's learning stuff. He looks like straight out of Pacific Rim. Yep. He's pretty BA. <laughs> yeah. You think you think of what? Big Hero, Big Hero 6. Six. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's not as uh huggable as Big Hero 6, I feel. Well, Oh, you think the one at the beginning? Okay. Well, I see it. It says in the Amazon listing, endless fun software to program robot to walk, dance, exercise, kick, fight, meet all your needs for different application scenes. Robot fighter, robot actor, Olympic robot athlete. <laughs> What? <laughs> Wait, what? Well, if you need, if you put him in a movie or something, he could be a robot fighter, robot actor, ro- Olympic robot athlete. Okay. You need your robot to do all the things. <laughs> we need a robot podcaster. There we go. There's no other. I really hate it because no one's really bought it yet because I really like the people ultimately bought the. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite things on Amazon. People looked at this, ultimately bought this instead. Yeah, yeah. We're like, oh, wait, there's a robot dog for $100. I think I'll go with that. Perfect. You know, so. All right. I'm, I'm picturing like 150 of these things teaming up and yes. taking out a Everyone. decent amount of people. Mm-hmm. Oh, like the, it, if you remember the Tom Selleck movie, Runaway. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I want to look that one up. <laughs> it's a it's a police officer that it, it's about Tom Selleck's a, a a police officer in the future. Keep in mind this was in in 1984. Okay. Um, a, a police officer in the future specializes in malfunctioning robots, Beep. and there's all these small, like they're they're probably I don't know, smaller than a shoebox. Okay. Um, okay. All these small spider type robe, they look like spiders, but um, they're all programmed to kill. <laughs> and, and and because he's like the police officer in charge of malfunctioning robots, of course they targeted his. Son. Would you like to be? Uh, <laughs> would you like to be uh, sought after to be killed by one uh, horse sized robot or a hundred duck sized robots? And that's the answer I, to your question. Is that movie? <laughs> Yes. 
Huh. Um, yeah, check it out. Um, it is on Amazon Video, um, on Prime Video. Speaking um, of Amazon, guys, I went on a field trip last week. What? I went on I a field trip. Awesome. I, the video's been up for a little bit. It's awesome. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, so I, I had, a, I was like, you know, I was getting a package and, you know, and it always says, hey, go to a locker. And there's not really a locker near me, right? Like in any great way that's convenient to me in any sort of way. So I had a few, uh, a few cords I needed to get for video stuff. And I was like, well, you know what? I want to go to the Whole Foods. Let's see how Amazon up Whole Foods is and everything. <laughs> so I made a video of my, of my trip and uh yeah amazon's everywhere and i got to see the amazon lockers so um like amazon in the physical world is very surreal it's it's weird to go into a store and just see like amazon prime logos everywhere and uh then the locker system was pretty cool and i guess this is one of the smaller lockers right uh, i guess there are bigger ones in oakland but it um like i said i felt like i was playing the prices right because you you would hit the button and you don't know when the where the locker is going to open <laughs> and they split my order into three packages for wow. some reason. I guess I guess the fit in the lockers. So I, I got to open three of them. Um, the, but it was it was a lot of fun. It, it's right there at the beginning. Uh, plus I got ten dollars for for Prime Day, um, which I used to grab a digital version of Avengers because I really just want to watch it on my phone instead of a DVD. Um, but <laughs> it was I don't know. It was a pretty cool experience. I. I understand Whole Foods now, I think, and why people want to go there. <laughs> um, and, and I got a, it, well, even I went in there and said, like, um, um, what was like, get $10, you get $10 for Prime Day, or spend $10, you get $10 for Prime Day. And then, you know, you, you use your, your uh, little barcode, it gives you on the uh, uh, Whole Foods app, which pretty much kind of works like, a, a, I think, a gecko card or a giant eagle card or something, right? Um, and, uh, like, I had, like, you know, two two for five strawberries and i had buy one get one of some fancy organic coffee that they had and i'm like oh, i could use coffee anyways but uh i don't know it was a really cool experience um i don't like going to the grocery store in general and this was like in the middle of the day on a wednesday so i have a feeling like it's probably a lot worse uh, like the one in the middle of the city uh for instance and in shady side because it's always a nightmare when i have to uh, uh lift people out of there um but uh i it was pretty cool. I, uh, Chilla, have you experienced any of this yet? Or this, this I have is not your... used the locker. I, okay. I have not used the locker, but we do we do leverage Whole Foods we, um, in a pinch sometimes if we're uh, late coming home from work or yeah. we're, we're busy. We actually use their prepared food section. Yeah, the prepared food section was impressive. I highly recommend the meatloaf. Oh, it's it's very very good. And you get it. You get to me. You got you get enough. To, it's like two meals. I never think about because market market districts over there too, and it's one of the really fancy giant eagle market districts that has all the prepared food, then an eatery and cafe kind of thing. I never think like, hey, let's get lunch at the grocery store, right? Like it just isn't in my my process, I guess. It, they even have a bar where you can buy beer and go over to the prepared food section and buy your food. No, I, think, I, I always yeah, feel I like think the they, line. Yeah, I always feel like. The lines are eight times as long at, at Giant Eagle, and the layout of the store is not optimized, or maybe I'm just stupid. But, yeah, I, I can't it, – it's like I get from one side of the store to the other, and I swear I walk up and down all the aisles, and then I get to the end, and I'm like, oh, I missed this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And then it's pretty much start back. You just need a better – Go back to go. Better start grocery go planning. And, or yeah. you just need to pre-order all of your stuff for you to pick up. Because yes. I think everybody does that now on the curbside, at least, right? But yeah, but Whole Foods just seems to make, from a layout perspective, seems to make more sense. It is a little more, it is a little smaller, so it's not as overwhelming. And you have one in the neighborhood, practically. Mm -hmm. There you go. And, and it's, I mean, you can hit there and then you can run to the Apple store. Yep. It's all, it's, it's all first world problems out here. Uh <laughs> Um, no, that was fun. Hey, you know where I like to go instead of the, uh, the prepared foods, um, place on, uh, Where they deliver to your house? Well, no, no, that, that, not that. Oh yeah. These guys do deliver to your house. Uh, yes. but they've been supporting Pittsburgh podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our good friends at slice on Broadway, slice on Broadway.com right here up the street, up from the studio on Broadway Avenue, as well as, uh, all around the city of Pittsburgh in the Carnegie PA. I guess that's not in the city East end in uh, PNC park, home of the, 
Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they are uh, great stuff. I've been loving their, their stuff on social media these these days. Um, although one of them looked like my pizza cam from Instagram a couple weeks ago. I'm, not, I'm noticing that, Slice. You're allowed to take our good ideas. We give you a lot on these commercials. We're still waiting for that drone delivery uh, to our friends in uh, in uh, California. But anyways, uh, thank you so much for them supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and all your other social medias as well. Thanks to them. Okay, let's see what we got uh, from the fan. Well, for some uh, less than awesome news or awesome, if you feel like you're going to be straight, uh, you're going to be uh, um, um, safer on the streets for this. But Uber has laid off a hundred of their uh, uh, automated drivers. That's a weird sentence by itself. Let me explain. The people that are behind the wheel while they're test driving. You know, we have been doing the automated car Uber pickups and everything. Those people have been laid off. They suspended all of those, including Pittsburgh and other cities where they've been doing it. Uh, I thought these were all Pittsburgh, but apparently this was spread amongst all the locations where they were testing these uh, uh, automated cars. Um, but they are replacing them with, with more 55 more specialized jobs for test track people. Um, so they're, they're basically moving all the uh, training off-road in the in close things and uh this is an unfortunate side effect from what's going on with the uber cars there's been some crashes lately and i know the uh, our own mayor here in pittsburgh has been like kind of uh, uh you know kind of laid down the you need to do x y and z in order for this to proceed here and or come back online and uh so that's the end of automated cars on our streets of pittsburgh for i guess a while <laughs> <laughs> oh poor uber Poor Uber. Well, poor, poor hundred jobs. First of all, yeah. But um, we didn't. We didn't think automated uh, cars were going to take the jobs that way. <laughs> but, um. But other than that, we also have some uh, other things that have been submitted. So this is one I believe Brandon, our friend in Kansas City, um, actually dropped this one in here. Let me double check real quick. Yep. Uh, banned in other cities, the Bird Electric stu- uh, uh, scooters have arrived in Kansas City. Now I wonder if these are the ones I was listening about on some other podcasts where uh these are like so they're electric scooters that you can um i believe these are the ones that you can rent like kind of like how we have the 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 ride healthy bikes here in pittsburgh and i know other cities have something like that too right um uh yeah new york city has that too um the 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 scooters are tracked with gps and uh uh, you pay at uh, designated chargers between five dollars and twenty dollars to pick up the scooters and uh and you can then charge them at home even um, the Chargers bring their scooters to their nests scattered in downtown, um, all around Kansas City. This is this has been an interesting thing, but I've heard about like other cities. Like I think these got these, these have been banned in things like like San Francisco, uh, maybe Los Angeles. I think I was hearing um, because like they get littered all over the place, mm-hmm. right? Like people just leave them when they're done with them, and, and then they like had to pay for collect people to collect the scooters up to to return to their home, I guess, eventually too. So I, I think it's a cool idea. Maybe you know. Um, uh, you know, another side of it than like the bike, maybe not the ride healthy part, but just ride with lower emissions in general, right? I wish I had an electric scooter just to get up the hill four blocks to here to work, to be honest. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised that it's because those bikes you continue to get billed till you return them to a terminal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that to me, that's an easy way to to get around the scooters left all over the place. Mm-hmm. issue it just make make some kind of charging station and you you swipe your card when you have you you check it out you get billed by the hour and then at some point in time um you it, have to return it yeah where well, they where you park them where you went and then you return it back right uh because yeah. the problem the problem has been according to this article in uh uh can at kansascity.com um rogers in this article said he's heard issues in other cities of scooters that clog up rights away block sidewalks and cause issues uh for those in wheelchairs um so they're they're disappointed that they rolled this out before any regulations could be put in place for something like this widespread so and and of course the company is trying to get people away from using their cars if they don't need to you gotta think if you're only going like hey cross downtown you're not going to drive or you know from neighborhood to neighborhood where this makes sense in a lot of cases and just uh, gets more cars off of the streets so um it's interesting i i don't know if we would get this alongside our uh, healthy ride bikes here in this city um but I, it's good to see those rolling out and and i'm sure they'll work out with regulations and stuff and um those other kind of things 
Um, also in here, let's see, Riz says, this tray takes eating on the go to the next level. Let's see what he's got over here. So this is, uh, we got a video attached here. So how about if you had a TV tray in your car, uh, Chilla? I I like this. I, I saw this and it was like kind of they showed him <laughs> eating food and then they turned it over and it had like a iPad stand with a keyboard. Yeah. Um, I really like this concept. It's an c- interesting concept, but what? So you, you so you don't you're not driving while this thing so it, it attaches to your steel steering wheel. This is good for Sonic, I guess, when you're when you're going through and so I view it as so if you're in sales. Mhm. And you are always on the go, going to meet with clients, whatever. <clears throat> and you really don't have kind of a home base of operation day to day. I I've talked to a number of people in sales that their office is their car, but and they schedule their clients thirty minutes apart. And what they do is they'll go into They'll strategically figure out, you know, the optimum way to get from client to client throughout the day. And they, the goal of the 30 minutes between client visits is 15 minutes to commute, 15 minutes to work. And they take and update all of their documents, data, take notes from the meeting mm-hmm. into like customer relationship management programs, et cetera, in their car. So to me, this makes really good sense for that type of worker. I could see this becoming extremely handy. Hmm. Um, and then, then hey, you stop out for lunch. Now you got a tray in your car to eat on too, and you're not spilling food all over your lap. Uh, um, Katie, you're you're a pretty on the go worker. Yes. I, I know you're you're like I'm seeing your meetings all over town and everything for your work and everything. Would this be something of assistance to you? I like it. You like it? I like it. <laughs> I wish I could eat more fast food so it would make it better for me. But I do eat a lot of tacos. <laughs> so it would work for tacos and nachos and cheese. Shout out to my boys at Taco Bell. <laughs> the lettuce gets everywhere. That's my problem. That's me. Yeah, everywhere. Uh, Absolutely everywhere. Uh, I'm afraid to look under my seat next time I clean the car. <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite taco place? Well, on the go taco place is Taco Bell. Places with uh, a drive through I do like me some Crunchwrap Supremes. Oh my gosh. Cheesy Gordita Crunches. I miss those. Nachos and cheese, tacos. Guess who's getting Taco Bell after the show? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I could do a whole podcast on Taco Bell. Let's do There's it. no Taco Bells downtown. That's what upsets me. No, that's amazing. Not mentioning them by name, but not sponsor. No, Taco no, Bell, Taco no. Bell, Taco Bell. If we talk about them enough, they'll appear. <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> Well, Maybe getting... they'll become a sponsor. <gasps> there you go. Ooh. There you go. What's up, Taco Bell? Make sure you tag them in the tweet so they become a sponsor. Um, <laughs> or send us free Taco Bell, at least. Yes. Uh, anyways. Um, but no, thanks, uh, thanks, Riz, for that. We know how Riz is getting around and eating his food now. Uh, <laughs> and finally, uh, from the submitted uh, uh, stuff here, uh, also from... Also from uh, Brandon out there in Kansas City. Um, it looks like Rugrats is coming back to television. Are they are they going to be on Nickelodeon again? Or it are has they been. Be it's a Nickelodeon thing. Are they grown uh, up? No, Nickelodeon has confirmed that they're coming back, and it's uh, also uh, including a, a live action movie. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, but the original um, it looks like the the, the original uh, people are, are going to serve as executive producers. So uh, this isn't going to be. I, I don't think it's going to be as crazy a reimagining of what they've been doing with Ninja Turtles lately. Which man, I hope I'm going to like that. Uh, <laughs> Um, Katie, you and I are going to re- re- revisiting our childhood and fully reimagined uh, uh, between She-Ra and Ninja Turtles here oh, soon, right? Yeah, everything, everything's coming back again. <laughs> what year I'm is just, this? I'm just sad that there's, like, I love that there's She-Ra, but there's no <laughs> sign of anything He-Man coming out. Yep. He better be making a cameo, and I know it's going to be a completely girl-centered mo- show probably, but I'm probably going to watch at least a few episodes hoping for a prince ad. It'd be real sad if he doesn't. I yeah. want to see what he looks like. I'm excited. <laughs> Maybe he'll have a man bun. A man bun Prince okay. Adam? No, yeah. I think, oh yeah, I think a reimagined Prince Adam would definitely have a man bun. Um, He's pulling a Larry. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I own the, the 2000s era reboot they did for two seasons. And man, I, they were so close to doing the, the, the Hordak and She-Ra stuff. Like the next season and they canceled it. <laughs> the done. sons of bitches. 
like they knew. I think they were just like starting to allude to him having a sister, right? And just like, ah. And done. Mm, so good. Well, things that aren't going away and will not disappoint you like the mm-hmm. uh, un- non-existing third season of, uh, of of the He-Man series. Uh, Alexander Cars at alexcars.media uh, has uh, uh, really good stuff uh, going on out there. He's worked with us with a lot of projects here around Sorgatron Media and Sidekick Media Services. And of course, a great contributor to the podcast as well. Uh, he's putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. You can check him out at alexandercars.com and alexcars.media media to see his projects and uh communicate with him about stuff he i say he's on t-shirts for us he's done websites he's done uh, dvd covers um he's done a, a lot of different work and uh continues to we, we chat a lot about uh projects that he's working on over there and uh and working those out and sometimes he asks us questions here on awesome cast uh about some of those project work that he does like uh, the ama that you guys will be seeing next week but uh thanks to him alex cars that's k-a-h-r-s dot com uh okay so uh let's touch in let's touch geez i have been really bad with phrasing the last couple of days on these shows uh (laughs) chilla what's going on with office so microsoft made an announcement i think it was late last week um they came out with a bunch of additional collaboration tools in the office 365 slash microsoft 365 world the first one and i can't remember if we talked about it because i don't I think it may have been announced yet last week. Teams, Microsoft Teams, the competitor to Slack, is now has a free version, a free tier. Um, I think that's going to be huge. Um, persistent chat, uh, audio and video calling, 10 gig of free storage for your team, plus two additional two gig per person. Um, integrated online apps, including Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Um, You get up to 140 integration uh, app integrations on the on the free tier, including Adobe Evernote, Trello, et cetera. Um, And then you can also use this within your close knit group and add people externally up to about 300 people, I think is the limit. Um, In addition to that, last week, they added new intelligent event capabilities to Microsoft 365. So if you're a 365 for business group, um, and we were talking about podcasting and video earlier, they have their own kind of YouTube um, Mm -hmm. called Streams. Mm -hmm. Within Streams, you can, uh, I think, do, I think it's over a thousand people um, live. Um, And then the it's really cool. Once it records, um, you can actually, it does facial recognition throughout the video. It doesn't know necessarily you're you and I'm me. Um, it just knows that Sorg's face shows up at, mm-hmm. at these, at these time, time points or my face shows up at these time points or Dutter's face shows up and you can pick the kind of head, the, the pick the image of the person and it'll show you on the timeline everywhere where that person talks along with doing automatic uh, live closed captioning and also doing um, language conversion. So if you hmm. um, speaking English and you can't speak English, but you speak Spanish, um, it will give you all Spanish subtitles um, on, as a closed caption. <clears throat> they did some stuff with analytics. Um, people probably aren't as interested in that, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it kind of goes through your calendar and says, Hey, we noticed you're totally book. You're booking, you're filling up from a calendaring perspective. Do you want to schedule some focus time? Uh, to make <laughs> that sure that sounds work? like something Clippy would ask you. Aww. Hey, you look overworked there, pal. Can I help you with your schedule? No, he's the best. Yeah. yeah. And, and the last, the last thing was, which was what, um, interested me was they released, uh, GA, their whiteboard. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have a whiteboard app. It's been in, in preview. Anyone could download it from the app store. It has gone GA. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do justice to it, but yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see it. Um, if you're a Windows 10 user, I highly recommend just going to, and downloading it. You don't have to be an Office 365 subscriber. Mm. It has a lot of, it has, it's pretty much a whiteboard that you can share live with anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's coming to iOS shortly really 
Yes, it's going to come to iOS, which I thought was really cool. So nice. you can whiteboard across locations, shared with others. Um, you can use pen, touch, keyboard, et cetera. Um, and then it's also, they're also coming out with a web version, um, which they say will be in preview shortly. And they did, the interesting thing was they didn't comment on an Android version. Did but we, did I'm we... guessing we'll see an Android version after the iOS and, right. and uh, web versions are out there. But uh, Whiteboard definitely took took my eye to their announcement. I, I like whiteboarding. I like kind of sketching out diagrams. Mm -hmm. So that was a big one for me. Um, I also thought it was very interesting that they have launched a free uh, Slack competitor. Um, still so not, I'll be, still I'll be not going to take me out of my Slack, though, I don't think. Because you're already in Grain. Yeah, right? we're already in there. We have everybody in there. I, I'm on several Slack boards. It just doesn't seem to make sense at this point. Yeah, so. I, I, I think for for a number of people, they're not going to leave Slack, just like people that are using HipChat probably aren't yeah. going to leave HipChat. I'm also a freeloader. We have not paid for any of our Slack channels, but we haven't really, until we started um, running out of space, probably because I uploaded video at some point, because um, I thought that was a good idea. Uh, I didn't realize how much space we actually had in there uh, without paying for it, but uh, no. How much I, space do you have in Slack without paying for I it? I think it's only two gigs. So, so, so there's there's something to think about. Teams yeah. is ten. It's ten gig for the team, mm -hmm. and an additional and, two gig per person. And that was just I was in one, and I was trying to uh, shoot some. I think I was shooting the sawtooth videos to uh, to uh, Katie and Will about uh, you know just to pre them like hey guys i got this one together check it out you know i didn't want to put it up anywhere that would be you know i had to you know fuss with the the privacy or anything right mm -hmm. um so and again just kind of feeling out what worked and didn't work in slack at the time and then like we started getting notices a couple months ago about it i know it's one of the other slacks i'm on that somebody else may have just started getting that notice so i'm kind of interested to see and hey um if you don't pay for slack you have to delete files individually I won't point that out too. So I think that is a little, well, why don't you just pay for more space, buddy, instead of deleting all these text files? It's like, oh, okay. Um, Katie, what is Netflix doing? I have no idea. Okay. No so idea. I, <laughs> well, I didn't Neither know if this they. was, a, okay. I, I don't know if this is a thing. I don't, I can't figure out where it's come from. I just happened to see it on Facebook. But if you message face, you go on Facebook and message Netflix, it'll tell you it's a bot and it's a program. But it'll start a conversation with you um, as soon as you message it. It says, get started. It's like, hey, Katie, I want to help you find something to watch. Send the emoji that best describes your mood, and I'll send you a recommendation. Or if you're new to this whole thing, here's a menu to guide you. So I sent them a unicorn emoji, and it said, let's go exploring. And then weird wonders of the world came up. Uh, watch now. Add to favorites. Not interested. And then you can ask for a new recommendation or return to the menu. What is this thing? When did this arrive? <laughs> Oh, so uh, Go, yeah. an emoji. So I'm I'm pulling it up now over mm -hmm. here. Uh, so I'm here. You got to pull it up, and and, and it said that all the stuff that you just said. So I'm going to do the tongue out, winky, wild face uh, uh, emoji. So this, this is kind of how I feel right now. Let's see what it responds. Let's see. I like your sense of humor, uh, and your sense of humor may like this. And I have uh, Mike and Russell's wild ride. I have no. I've never heard of this. I've never heard what yeah, is Yeah, they're very this? odd shows. Like it, it's gonna. Oh, okay. It looks like it's a comedy of some sort. Um, and I'm de I'm already in this, so I'm completely gonna see it on my feed later. Yep. <laughs> like it, it automatically uh, pulled in and started playing it. So um, nice. Oh, okay. Two for mm -hmm. the money media. Yeah, this. I mean, this looks like a road trip ish like kind of comedy from that I can tell so far in this. So I'm gonna stop playing before we get a copyright notice. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say you're gonna get banned. <laughs> okay, so let's say let's say um, I did angry face and it said feeling cranky today. Let's express that rage in a healthy way. Rise of the Legend is the movie it suggested for me to curry, curry his crime boss a favor. An orphaned kung fu prodigy goes after a rival. <laughs> uh, let's see this. Well, oh wait, oh you can actually go in here. Frank and Candy burn after reading. Uh, stand up for drummers. Um, sharknado five <laughs> wait five we got the five <gasps> and it's on netflix nice jeez oh man i got irvy after getting tricked into working at a brothel a medical student joins forces <laughs> it sounds like this it's is for awesome you. that's this from is... your angry face yeah my angry face wow um that might be interesting that this... might that might be kind of interesting yeah these are all like things i've never heard of 
Mm-hmm. But still. They got a deep catalog of, of just shit you've never heard of. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll have to try that. That's on the Facebook. Uh, go to the Facebook page for Netflix and uh, and hit their chat, and it'll start walking you through that if you want to check it mm-hmm. out. That's, uh, that looks like you can have a little bit of fun with that. Yes. Chilla, you were excited when I told you that there's uh, uh, the Wise Cam. Did you pick up a Wise Cam yet? I did not pick up a Wise Cam yet. Well, I have three of them now. <laughs> and <laughs> are they? Are they? Did you get them wet after midnight? Like what? or feed them after midnight? What yeah, happened? yeah. They, well, the one kind of did because it ended up on somebody else's porch. I told them they sent me another one, and then I found the guy, the, the the what other porch it ended up on and got it. So I kind of got an extra one. Um, but it's, I I wanted to get a third one anyway. So we got two here in the studio, and I got one at the home. I I want I want to get some other ones there for the outside. Um, and I don't think Wise Camp does outside ones. Um, but but why is the why, wyze these are like 25 dollar cameras you can get that give you two weeks of cloud uh storage of your footage and everything now they work with amazon echo make sure i say the right thing here um so you can so so you can get what an audio feed off of them, so here's or? what it, here's the, the example is showing is say hey hey such and such show me the living room the name of your camera right and it'll show up on your amazon show Okay, for that's your spot. that's the use your spot. I mean, yeah, the, the, the spot is I think what I mean. The spot's but the one, in the picture, but I'm sure it works with the show as but well. But the ones with the video screens, like you, you can do that. Um, so if it's uh, if it's uh, enabled devices uh, connect to a screen, um, it will work with the Y skill. For example, the Echo Show, the Echo Spot, or Fire TV HD and Fire TV 4K. So you can say, mm-hmm, "Show me the living room," and it'll show up on your television. If you have a Fire TV connected. In related, related news, I'm completely bringing my Fire TV into the office. Yes. Yes. You're you're costing me money. Yeah. But it's only twenty five dollars a camera. Yeah, but now I need a a, a show, or I need a <laughs> at least a spot. I was thinking about getting a spot too now. <laughs> and the spot is it still fifty? Was it fifty or a hundred bucks off? Probably. Uh, what uh, now for uh, Prime Day? Would, they they were before Prime Day they went on sale. Oh really? Uh, I'm I was hoping to hold out till Black Friday, like the Christmas season Black yeah, Friday, yeah. to see if if because I really like that form factor of that device. Mm-hmm. I I, I've seen really it. They, they have it in the you know Brian's talking about. They have it in the Rivers Edge and and they can like he can call like from home to the office via them. But now the, this idea that you can like throw up your security cameras, like hey, show me the front porch. Hey, show me the studio. Hey, show me the front the the studio front. You know, um, I, I think that's a pretty pretty cool use of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so um, yeah, again, you know, we kind of said like I don't know how this bias cam is going to keep in business for selling twenty five dollar <laughs> cameras and giving you free cloud storage, but they they they're doing a lot. And I, I imagine they have to be doing pretty good at this point, right? So, well, and if all else fails, it, it, it records locally on SD card too, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, it does. It does. What, what's that, Katie? Don't read the comments for <laughs> <laughs> the reviews on <laughs> on Wisecam. Oh yeah, remember we went through those, and it's nothing but sending your information to blah blah blah. Oh yeah, you're probably sending all my video feeds to Russia. I don't know. That's pro- that's probably why they're keeping it so cheap. They're probably based there. you're probably on a reality show in a oh. <laughs> in Russia or oh. China. This is this is Sorg Channel. That, that's why they're keeping your cost down. Oh, okay, all right. I wouldn't suggest putting one in your bathroom. Oh, that ain't no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, we did not research that part of this. So, <laughs> also of interest because, well, you know that things like Harry Potter are coming soon from the people that did Pokemon Go and everything, right? Well, um, there's now also a Walking Dead AR game. Well, this is the guy. <laughs> I love they even show Pokemon Go <laughs> as an example in this video, <laughs> and how you just sit there and and capture <laughs> any sighing. And then there's just zombies. Um, but this is more, you actually take the phone, you go outside, and, uh, and, and, and you find zombies a little bit more. Um, so, again, kind of, there's <laughs> the guy getting in his car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. But anyways, uh, you know, there's, that, that's another, the AR, AR games are coming, guys. But uh, I haven't had a chance to download and check this out, but it's definitely on my... Uh, uh, list here maybe it'll be perfect perfect thing to pull up uh, around the gathering 
But um, in other news, let me see what we're doing on our time here. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on before we head out of here? Chilla, you see Magic Leap is actually going to release something. Do we think it it's the- real? <clears throat> I'm bringing up the... I apologize. I, I saw this. I was pretty pretty impressed with some of the the video they showed and mm. i'm we'll see how how it actually works when it hits the market but hopefully they don't pull a uh what's microsoft's a hollow hollow lens hollow lens yeah yeah that's what i'm worried like about it goes from it goes from full-fledged ar to a mailbox slot in the center of your vision um but this looked this looked pretty impressive. The, so it's a it's a the headset. Headset's a bit big. But. It's a it's a headset. It looks like I don't know aviator glasses or something. Um, but they're a little bigger than aviator glasses. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they look interesting. Um, they say it's going to be coming out here. It's going to be on uh, Tegra uh, uh, Nvidia's uh, Tega X2 system on a chip, which is relatively uh, powerful. But uh, it says it could cost as much as a thousand dollars. But that's not necessarily how much you'll you'll pay. Um, so that, uh, or they say it's about, take about a thousand dollars to make, but that's not necessarily the price for this thing. Uh, the company revealed that it's the creator edition of, it, of, uh, it's one headset should be available sometime later this summer. So I'm worried if it's probably going to be like that preview SDK, you know, get it to start working with it and playing with it kind of thing for developers and people that want to use this kind of thing, like Google glass. So, but it's real. We'll see. It exists. It exists. At least it's supposed to exist. We'll see if I'm surprised here. how how long it's taken for for kind of the next Google Glass iteration. I feel like we've mm-hmm. hit a huge lag or a huge bump in the road. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I was pretty darn happy with Google Glass, other than the battery life and camera quality. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm just surprised how long we're seeing it take to get us to the next point. Hmm. It's a question for you. AMA, AMA continues here in the Google Doc here. Um, is this you or Missy? That put, Missy put this in here. Question for Chilla. Is this something new? Uh, the Nest CEO uh, steps down uh, as the company joins Google's home division. Yeah, I, I just saw that on on new like on the news feed. I didn't see that before I left work, so it must be relatively. Yeah, this article is about an hour ago. It looks like recent. Yeah, which I, I'll be interested to see how that. Why did he step down? It sounded like the people asked him to step down. His his people asked there's him been, to step down. There's been a lot of news about this for a while, as they've been trying to like like Nest really just hasn't had a foothold since they got bought by Google. Um. And I think there might have been some management questions too, um, over the over the, the last year or so. Uh, so it's not really surprising. I, I don't understand why it wasn't folded in to begin with. I mean, you have this entire like home division that Google's doing, so you know everything's starting to integrate anyway. So why why it be a separate division? Yeah, but he, but they they were part of that alpha. They were one of the letters in the alphabet, right? <laughs> yeah, and we have no end in alphabet now. I, yeah. I like an um, update on that but, alphabet. So who's going to take over that division? Well, the home division, it would just become part of the home division that already has. Um, let's see. Headed by Rishi Chandra, Vice President of Product Management and the, and the Nest Employees Report to Chandra. Okay, so it'll be to Chandra. It'll be interesting to see, will they move faster at integration? Mm-hmm. Um, Because that was the one thing that I felt like they never, for as fast as Google can move, they didn't, even the Nest cams didn't get integrated into the, the the Nest and and the the thermostats and all that kind of stuff didn't get integrated in very quickly, even and and integrate with um, uh, Google Home either. So, yeah, I I don't know what the sticking point was there. Okay. Um, yeah, we have the Wise camera that's already working with our Amazon shows in spots. 
That'll be interesting to see that. Um, this was a fun story that uh, I was really happy because this, <laughs> I, I actually tagged our friends in government, including the mayor of Pittsburgh, about this because we're a very, uh, if you haven't heard, we're a very data centric city here in Pittsburgh. And, and there's some really cool stuff. I mean, that's why things like Uber really made sense uh, being here and everything like that, too, right? But uh, Waze will provide its traffic data for free, apparently. To U.S. cities, I tagged the mayor. I tagged some other people I know in the uh, mayor's office, and I'm glad to see that uh, they they were sharing it with some appropriate uh, 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 parts of the city as well. So um, this is, you know, ways, you know, as it is, like you know, we talked about before about Uber was providing some interesting tap, traffic data um, to help kind of determine things. Um, so this goes for like a, a city like this that's uh, you know getting more more data to figure out what works where are the bottlenecks and everything like that uh ways completely makes sense for it right yeah it'll be interesting to see how the cities can what cities did uh, i apologize if i missed it did, did they give a list of the cities that are kind of no they jumping just on that they simply said that they are going to make it available, available. to the cities see i think so. there's there's a certain level of maturity Mm -hmm. your city has to have to <clears throat> really make use of that data. I think Pittsburgh is, is probably a good location for that, but I'm interested to see what the uptick in, in, in that utilization is yeah, and how I mean, those cities are using it. Much like the argument I know happens here because I've heard the arguments from detractors of, of our mayor about we shouldn't be concerned with the data. We should be concerned about other issues that we have, but you know, still the thought of the data helps solve identifies and solve some of these issues i think is like where the discussion comes from and 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 other cities where they're like we're we don't haven't even thought about this data idea and this data being something that that could be useful to our town right also a size of where city. i think it would be interesting i think it would be interesting if you could dynamic route detour traffic absolutely I, I feel like pittsburgh's like the city of detours <laughs> yes. and they set up one Obviously, to, I'm sure it's from a, a people process and technology perspective. They they set up one one route, right? You're mm -hmm. detoured this way. You go around this way, whatever. If you could dynamically route and and kind of say, okay, this this detour route's filled up and starting to get backed up. Let's move people this way. It may be a half mile longer for this other route, but based on traffic patterns right now, it makes the most right. sense. I mean, we switch our bridges in the middle of the day, right? Right. Um, right. I, I think we, we could, but that's a time thing, a I think this. more. Um, but I also want to like, we see those signs, we see those signs, uh, like going to the airport or going through scroll Hill, um, that lets you know how long it's going to take you to get to X. Like, um, you know, if you're coming down Parkway North, <laughs> daughter's is making selfies. It's distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> um from parkway north is like this is how long it takes to get the liberty tunnel right for instance you know mm -hmm. getting across cross town boulevard is kind of a problem how are they identifying that and of course this is a broader scale because then it's not just those highway marks where they do have whatever mechanism to kind of gauge traffic right so i'm guessing it's something to do with the traffic cams but yeah but yeah i'm not sure yeah like they're, they're rigged in certain places where they want that data to be displayed but then there's also yeah, like this this gets more of it so um, but it, it's cool to see them kind of rolling that out. You know, any, anytime like, like somebody like this or Uber kind of puts that data out there to, you know, hopefully help cities fix themselves a little bit is, is definitely appreciated. So, um, well, I want to give a shout out real quick. I'm heading to the end of the show. Uh, I, I, but, oh, go ahead. Real quick. I wanted to hear your opinion on the new MacBook Pro. I haven't looked much into it other than, man, now I wish I had money to get a MacBook Pro. <laughs> I, I just um I, I I'm glad to know. So here's here's the problem I have is I don't I don't think I want to get a MacBook Pro. I want to get a desktop because I need something with power here in the studio, or I need something in a Mac Mini form factor for what we're doing remotely, right? Because mm. we're literally carrying a, a computer tower with us to the shows at this point, and I just want a Mac Mini that goes into the case along with the switcher and that's it right um but i don't want to grab a mac mini that has hardware from three years ago right i'm, I'm guessing we'll see a new one of those that's, in the... I, that's what i'm hoping um but so... I, I was just surprised six core i9 processor i mean those the the macbook pro is getting pretty beefy right right um 
good to see that they're they're dedicating to that. I, I'm I still wonder what our Mac Pros are going to look like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm amazed that you can make a seven thousand dollar MacBook Pro in configuration. <laughs> That's obviously not for me. I'm not at that level for for stuff like that yet. But um, mm-hmm. um, you know, we're we're not doing that high end of projects here, right? Uh, technically, uh, that we need like the crazy four or five AK, you know, stuff like that. That 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 would deserve right or 3D modeling or anything like that. So, but uh, just knowing that if I need a MacBook soon, it'll be relatively awesome. Uh, is is all I need to know out of that. So. Um, sorry, I just saw my Netflix in my messages on my phone and it threw me off. Uh, anyways, well, I want to give a shout out as I see him loading up the car here for whatever project he's got going on next. Our friends here down below us here at Sogatron Media in Dark Forge Studios. Um, they're doing a lot of cool stuff down there. Cool secret stuff. I don't know. I hear a lot of banging every once in a while. That's all I know sometimes. <laughs> Katie knows it. <laughs> nothing um but uh giving a shout out to uh aaron that does a lot of that amazing work you can go check it out at darkforgestudios.org uh if you can imagine his dark for what dark co i'm sorry dark co darkforgestudios.co uh dark Forge studios can bring it to life whether it's uh custom props escape rooms haunted attractions or custom set design uh, Aaron can, uh, has done it all and then some. For more information, please visit darkforcestudios.co for the cool people. Dot co. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks for that. All right. Uh, well, like I said, we're going to be off here next week, but we got a special AMA episode we just recorded that will be in your feeds here uh, next week. And then we'll be back after that uh, uh, for awesome cast proper. Uh, and uh, probably won't take a break for a good while unless uh, there's a really good unless, unless there's a really good reason for it. We and, and like I said, next week we'll be at podcast movement. Uh, Missy will producer Missy will be representing with her uh, session. What's the name of that session again? You, you titled it. Low budget. Low budget, high value. Low budget, high value. There you go. Low budget marketing options for the beginner podcast. And uh, we'll be, of course, social media. Maybe we'll stream the session from there if we have the ability to. Um, and having fun there and checking out Philly for that. I will be also at the Gathering of the Juggalos so my, um, for the rest of this week. So my social media will be very interesting. Uh, so you can follow at Sorgatron to find out what's going on there. Uh, Katie dude is is at the scare house where you I guys, will not be at the gathering i'm very sad no you will be, not be at the gathering sad but face. you'll be doing scare house live at noon on friday, on friday. yes so from the gathering no. <laughs> from the, i need to go together wouldn't, wouldn't that be amazing oh i'd, I'd have way too much fun with that <laughs> like we're doing all the things from the gathering this week welcome it's like we entered the world's biggest spook house so creepy. Actually, oh, yeah, see, that's Friday. That's Friday morning. So people have been there for a couple of days. So it actually does get scary oh. for different reasons. Yes, yes, yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah. And When's I'm, our documentary coming out, Sorg? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were all interviewed, but there's like another movie that's premiering with um the girl that the lead from uh, Orange is the New Black. Oh. There's a comedy that they shot part of it at the gathering last year. What the heck? And they're premiering it. It's already been to, like Sundance Film Festival and everything. It's called Family. Nice. And there's a teaser out there of her like at the at the gathering uh, in Oklahoma last year uh, in full face paint talking about her family. Nice. So it looks like it could be really interesting and a, a fun movie. So um, unfortunately, it's during wrestling, and I'm going to go watch the wrestling. Let's be honest about this. Yeah. Kate Dutter's on the Twitter. Yes. Uh, are you going to ask any more questions on Instagram? <laughs> Yes. No, I didn't mind. I I went pretty well. I enjoyed my questions. I'll have to do that again mm-hmm. when I'm in a car ride, you know, for a while. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Like doing the hey, because again, one of my wrestling friends, like, hey, I'm on a ride back from Cleveland. Yeah. You know, ask me anything for the next hour, or hey, I'm up for a bit. They ask me anything for the next hour on whatever platform they choose, right? Mm-hmm. So I chill on the Twitter. Trying to chill on the Facebook. Hey, and if you're going to replay FX at the end of the month, I will yeah. be there on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday Come find and Sunday. me. I will be. I actually got into. Um, I'm, we're going to be helping uh, John Lang and looking for group with a lot of the production. Um, I'm going to be there as part of uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh's uh, crew. It looks like, and uh, I will be 
behind the switcher. So I'll be watching all the musical acts Friday and Saturday, because unfortunately I'm not going to be there Thursday. I'll be on a bus back from Philly. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be around there. And also, if you're not going to replay FX, there are four streams on Twitch that are going to be going live. Just four? Just four. Yeah, just four. Just four. Uh, Pinberg is going to have their own one. Um, there's going to be one for the stage. There's going to be one for all the tournaments, including the biggest Tekken 7 tor- tournament ever, I think. I think Fortnite tournament might be a part of that, too. Uh, we were talking about that a little bit last week. And, uh, and, and, and they're doing another stream that's, like, hosted. And we're going to be pulling different streams live from everything everything everybody else is doing. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun um, online or in person. Definitely recommend it. It's at David Lawrence Convention Center, downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, check them out. I believe it's replayfx.org. Or just type in replayfx. You'll find the site, too. So that is next weekend. Not this weekend. Next weekend. This will be our last live show before that. So we had to get that in. Say hi to Chilla. Try to make sure Dutters goes down there, too. I want to go Thursday, but I think Missy's going to be on a bus, too. Yeah, yeah, she is. I'm not coming back from Philly. She's not coming back from Philly? <laughs> just going to stay there eating cheesecakes. Cheesecakes? Cheesesteaks. Cheese steaks. Yes. Cheesesteaks. Cheesesteaks. Someone someone should try, and I don't know if this would even work. Someone should try, like, a, a Twitch inception where everyone gets on and restreams the replay effects streams. Well, we're just stay at different angles. Yeah, yeah. It, it would, would be, be like totally a 360. crazy if, if... <laughs> Yeah, I've already set up. We're gonna we're gonna host um um whatever replay FX streams over on our Sorgatron Media channel. I think I'll probably kill the replay streams for the weekend, so those will come through. Um, and hope you guys have been uh, uh, checking those out too. We're playing a lot of the most recent content on our Twitch stream that probably won't get updated over the next week and a half since I won't be around, but uh, that's out there too. So you guys can catch up. If you miss us, you can just revisit everything going on there. So thank you everybody. Thank you everybody in the chat room. Thank you. Brandon, Alex was in there and I think he's owning us on, on the wrestling mayhem show here in a little bit. I see my mom just popped in. Hi mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else has popped in through the night and everybody participated in our AMA that will be distributed here next week uh, thank you and until the next uh, you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com